This episode of the Impact Lounge is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.com, the number one place for your hotel and travel needs. It's easy to use and gives you many options to sort the results and find the best hotel for you. Listeners of the Impact Lounge can receive a $25 cash reward upon your first time booking. All you have to do is check out the description at either Podbean or YouTube. Click the link, book your stay or your travel, and get a $25 cash reward. Hello, welcome back to another Impact Lounge Impact Review. I'm your host, Adam, and I'm joined by Ro. Hi, Ro. Hey, Adam. How's it going, man? Really good. And apologies to our listeners. You know, last week uh, I wasn't able to do the review. I did mention I was going on holiday. Even even podcasters need a break. uh, But it does mean that now I'm back full on schedule. Uh, No more holidays for me now until uh, the end of June. So, yeah, you'll be hearing these this British accent for quite some time to come. Anyway, uh, yeah, Impact. I'll be honest with you, Ro. I haven't watched it last week, but I've I've seen this week's show. But I did miss last week's and also the uh, the Impact versus Luke stuff so uh, you might have to fill me in on a few things that have happened during uh, the, the coming weeks i have been keeping up on it but uh yeah as we go through the this w- review show today i'm sure our listeners will point will point out to us uh, my lack of knowledge on certain things that, that have taken place anyway uh before we get into the review just want to uh, remind everyone if this is your first time stopping by the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're listening to us on youtube um we post a load of content there's uh, just recently been an interview with uh, Congo Kong has gone up that BQ did and hopefully within the next couple of weeks I'm going to be interviewing uh, former Impact or TNA Global Force Wrestling whatever you want to call it owner Jeff Jarrett at some point so look out for that as well but do make sure you subscribe so you get all of the content we are genuinely and uh, don't uh, t- become litigious on this and try and sue me for uh, for falsely representing the channel. But I believe we are genuinely the number one place for all news and reviews for Impact Wrestling. So hit subscribe. Let's get up to 4,000. We've hit 3,500 followers now. Let's try and get to that 4,000. And if you haven't already liked our Facebook page, it's um, Impact Lounge and also the Impact Wrestling Fan Zone. Make sure to check them out as well. Anything else to add before we dive into it, Ro? Um, I know uh, BQ always uh, references this one, but the Wrestling Persona 5 podcast, they also do an uh, impact review as well. So be sure to check them out. And as I said before, if you only listen to one podcast, listen to ours. But if you've got time for a second one, do check those guys out. They are very good. All right. Um, as I said, you know, I haven't seen last week's show. I've seen this week's that's just happened. Um, but I th- actually was really quite excited about this show because uh maybe i, I just didn't have my fix of t l oh, tna impact that shows how long i've been out of the game um my fix of impact and, and i really really enjoyed the show what, what did you make of it overall yeah i'm in agreement with you i'm like i said once again and i hate to sound like a broken record i'm just so f- fascinated with how you know you know when we normally get the long blocks of tapings how how great these shows have been even leading up to the pay-per-view. I've just been very impressed. Well, one thing that uh, I thought has been really, really good uh, about this has um, is the fact that we've had obviously problems with um, the uh, the main event, you know, which has uh, become quite apparent uh, with uh, Alberto being sacked by the company, and we'll cover that as we, as we talk through the show today. But one of the other things that Ro and I did start about a month ago before my schedule got thrown up into the air and all over the place was we've been doing these um, flashbacks to, to moments in in impact. And one of the ones we're going to do is talk about aces and eights. And I don't know if it'll go up before this show or after, but make sure you do check that out. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is that if you think them trying to rewrite the main event for redemption uh, is a work of creative genius or, or was thrown spanner in the works, when you think back to uh, Aces and Eights, that was a monkey in every part of the machinery every couple of weeks and Crater did a fantastic job there. But you'll hear my views on that on uh, the other recording that we do later on today, which uh, I'm sure will be going up in the next week. All right, but uh, let's dive into the show, shall we? Yeah, okay. let me let me ask you real quick before we dive in. What's your opinion of the new main event that we're getting at Redemption? Well, if I'm being honest, 
I would rather have seen the original one because there's been some build, there's some story to it. And I, I've, I've always said, you know, that I've been a big fan of Alberta in this run. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely 100% agree that they should have sacked him. And they did. And they've done the right thing. And they're salvaging what they can. I think from a wrestling point of view, it'll be very good. From a creative point of view, you know... <sighs> I'm struggling with it. You know, it doesn't make a whole deal of sense to me. And, you know, you, for me, I can't really see anyone but Aries retaining. Now, don't get me wrong, he could have an Eli cash in or something like that. But, you know, where's the other way you had a sense of the belt could change hands? I just don't think that they're going to change it on a match that's been thrown together. So I, I, I think it'll be a great wrestling match. It'll be entertaining. But... I'm not as hyped for it as I would have been for Alberto, if I'm being honest. How about yourself? You know, kind of the same thing. I do think, because I think it takes away some of the uh, unpredictability from it, because now, you know, it, it's hard to assume that Pentagon or Phoenix will be walking out with the Impact World Championship. However, I thought, and I'm, I guess it's too late now, but maybe if they made it a two out of three falls where one fall is for the grand championship and the other one is for the world championship, I think then you kind of give that element like, whoa, is Aries really going to walk out retaining both championships? But then, too, you know, we don't know if the grand championship is going to be something that they're going to do away with or if it's still going to stick around. So I thought if they were able to implement that, then it's kind of like, oh, okay. But, you know, like you said, too, you know, we still got the cash in, which I, I think Eli is going to cash in at another time. I can't see him cashing at the pay-per-view, but I'm sure that's something that, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see at Redemption. And that it, it's crazy to think it's a, we're a week away from it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, actually, you, you brought up a really good point there. It, it's not even something I considered about the, the global title. You know, um, yeah, it would make sense if, the, if they could make it two out of three falls. And as you say, that brings unpredictability back into it because you can't see him losing the main title. But certainly uh, the Impact Grand Championship, you could maybe see him losing. And it, it would mean that hopefully one or both of these guys will be a regular on Impact TV going forward as well. Um, has there been any news about that? As I said, I've been out of the loop a little bit because I've been out of the country, but has there been any news about these guys joining up either full-time or, or being bit part players? You know, not anything that I know of. Um, I'm sure we'll probably get more clarification after the pay-per-view since we'll be getting new tapings. But uh, from what I've seen, at least in Pentagon's case at uh, Lucha versus uh, Impact, um, impressive dude yeah well yeah i'm looking well i, I am looking forward to it, but as i said not just uh, as much as as you know the old few but they did what they did and i think they're absolutely right to do it all right so let's get into the show um obviously we had a recap of all of that uh, to kick off the show you know about alberto showing up at the press conference but then no showing uh, the actual match now it could have been because i was jet lagged for my flight and i watched this very late at night after having quite uh a limited amount of sleep the day before, but I'm not sure if they showed the recap on the British edition of this because if they did, I, I completely missed it. But uh, for me, that the, the show really started with Eli Drake coming out to the ring with both cases in hand. Now, I've always been a great fan of Eli, and this time he made me feel like he was more like Ric Flair than The Rock. I don't know why he came over as much more it, with his kind of taunts to the audience and those kind of things. It had a much more Ric Flair feel to it. And before you say uh, that's a bad thing, I, I think it's a brilliant thing. I think that he's got his character down. He's nailed it at the moment. I don't think anyone in pro wrestling has got their character down as well as Eli Drake. No, I, I think I've always believed he's been a combination of those guys. Like you see, you know, little bits and pieces. Like I think with the whole, um, you know, when he's uh, interacting with the audience, you know, telling them to shut up. It kind of reminds me of when The Rock, when he was really coming to his own and when people would kind of chant some of his sayings, he'd be all like, you know, he would tell them, don't do that. Stop it. You know, so I think that's what we see with Eli. But you know, this, this was great. Um, his interaction with LAX, I will say this as excited that I am to see him pairing with Steiner. I just kind of wonder at this, this stage, cause, uh, Steiner had wrestled, wrestled at the, uh, Lucha ver uh, versus, um, impact. I just wonder if he's limited in the ring. Like, I mean, obviously I know Eli will probably do most of the work, but you know, should they decide to 
you know, put the belt on Eli and Steiner, what can, how much can Steiner do? <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it, it is a bit of a worry. You know, I was at Slammiversary last year where Steiner was with, um, uh, who was he with? Josh Matthews, wasn't he? And um, he, he didn't look like he had much in the gas tank then, you know, in that, it, not in the way of being able to pull off moves, but just in actual being able to go for a long time. So I can't really see this being a long term thing. Uh, this, everything in this match points to Steiner and Eli Drake losing and then him cashing in later on in the evening for me that, that this is what it points to but i love steiner he's great you know on the mic I, I, you see comments all the time people saying you know they could listen to uh, an impact show with uh steiner just promoing for three hours <laughs> i think you know i think that is a pay-per-view um but the worry i have is that you know in if he was in any kind of physical shape and don't get me wrong he's still in better shape than me i'm sure he wouldn't be wearing a tracksuit top. You know, you'd have his arms out. You'd be doing some poses, those kind of things, which makes me think that this is going to be a bit of a train wreck match. Don't get me wrong. LAX, as I've talked about before, fantastic. Eli Drake is getting better all the time, but I think the Steiner factor, I don't know if they're going to make it into a brawl or what, what it's going to be, if it's going to be almost like um, like the Steiner match last time with uh, Joseph Park and... Um, uh, Josh Matthews, you know, where they went backstage and did some some recording. I just can't see this match being very good with him in it, unfortunately. And see, I'm I'm on the other side. I I think they're gonna win the belts, uh, and you know, and then but I mean, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought real quick. I but you know, once again, I just kind of worry about you know what he can do and will it take away from the match? Because LAX, we know what they bring to the table. And we know what Eli brings to the table. So you just wonder, I mean, outside of a belly to belly suplex and the Steiner recliner, I don't I don't even think I can't remember the last time I seen him take a bump. You and I mean I guess it's expected given his age, but we'll have to wait and see. But I will say too, the promo work between um Conan and uh Steiner in this, that exchange, that was great as well. Yeah, well, it was it was great. Uh, absolutely, it was it was it was really really good. So um, anyway, uh, just moving on, uh, we then went from that to Sanjay and Josh Matthews in the booth. Nothing really to add about this. I I do like the two of them together, and I do like these segments. I think they actually make the show feel more professional. And uh, I, I even like the pairing. I, I know there's some people being complaining of the fact that when Josh Matthews is in the ring, that you know Sanjay is not great as just a play-by-play guy by himself. But I think he actually does a really good job. I, I remember on WWE once where um, it was just um, I can't remember Byron, whatever his name was, ha- having to do a whole hour by himself, and it was like pulling teeth. I, I think Sanjay does very, very well by himself. But anyway, um, I do like these segments. I, I like the I like the commentary team, and uh, yeah, no, nothing really to add unless you have. No, nah, um, they've you know more and more man they've built chemistry and I like them now. On <laughs> I hope it's something to stay in the foreseeable future. But I mean, obviously everyone has different opinions, but I really think they work together well. And in the times that it's been just Sanjay, um, I've had no problem with it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, just. Uh, Going on from that, we then had the uh, GWN flashback, Jade versus Rosemary in a six sides to steel match. Uh, the crowd was, I know this is a flashback, but bearing in mind this was in a, in a time when, you know, crowds were dwindling. It wasn't like this is, a, this is Impact or TNA at its best, you know, with its biggest crowds. I thought that the crowd looked really good and really into this match. And, and it was a great match. Uh, it was really, really good. And it was good to see Rosemary back as a heel again because I'd forgotten what that felt like because she's been it feels like she's been a face for quite a long time now. Well, you know, the first good thing about this, they, they had actually shortened the flashback because that had been the problem that you know a lot of us fans and I'm sure people in the comments and even people who do the surveys um, that impact the impact social handle um, provide were saying that it's too long. I thought the way that they showcased this was excellent. And um, this feud right here, man, and, you know, props to Jade. And I know she's, you know, I don't know where she's at now, but props to Jade. I felt like this feud between her and Rosemary was one of the high points. I want to say this was back in 2016. 
So another match I kind of I recommend you guys catch. Um, I'm sure it's on the GWN app. It's the Last Man Standing match with Rosemary versus Jay. That was that was some great stuff. Well, funny enough, I was going to ask you about Jay because uh, usually when they have these flashbacks, it's usually got someone like. AJ Styles or someone who's in WWE doing well at the moment, you know, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put Bobby Lashley on there this week, to be honest, you know, with, <laughs> with, with, with their track record. But um, yeah, obviously Jade's not in the WWE or if she is, she's certainly in develop, developmental at the moment. But do you think she's someone who could add to the roster if she came back? You know, I think now it would depend. I think if she came back, she would kind of have to work her way up again. Uh, I mean, I know, you know, but when she had left, you know, she had a decent name and stuff, but I just think it would be unfair to bring her back knowing that she left to try to go over to the other side, which no, you know, no fall, but you can't put her in front of the line when you got, you know, Kara Hogan. Um, I don't know if Ava Story is still part of the roster. Um, Alicia Edwards, some of these knockouts that need that opportunity and need that TV time to kind of get over. And to put her in front of the line, I think that'd be unfair. So if you brought her back, I'm sure you can bring her back. But you just have to kind of treat her like, you know, she's at the back of the line, so to speak. Or at least in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it's it's funny because I never really bought into Jade at all, you know, because she was part of the dollhouse is how she came in. And she was interesting when she's in the dollhouse. And so was Marty Bell as well. I don't know if you remember her. Yeah. Uh, funny, I... enough, uh, funny enough, the, the promotion that she's been involved in has just folded. Um, so we might see her coming back as well. But, um, you know, the dollhouse was interesting, but I never really bought into either Marty or Jade when they went solo. And I know Jade, did she have a program, I think, with uh, Gail Kim to eventually win the title in a similar way that Ali did. But I don't know. I, j I just find her bland. There's just nothing about her that makes me think, do you know what? I I would pop huge if she returned. I think I'm around. Taryn Terrell, if she came back again, you know, I'd be excited. But uh, Jade, competent wrestler, but... I don't think, you know, as exciting as any of the women who are on the roster at the moment. And that's including the likes of Casey Spinelli, who we haven't seen in God knows how long. You know, she has got more of a defined character in five, six matches that she had this year or last year uh, than the Jay did in, in, in a couple of years. Um, talking of the dollhouse, if any of you want to go back and, and see uh, a great match, I think it was Congo Kong versus... Taryn Terrell, and I think that is when she turned heel. That is a great match, by the way. Just for I mean, the end. Uh, you talking about Awesome Kong? I was like Kong, Kong. Kong, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, sorry, Kong. Awesome what? Kong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a different. That's a completely different match. I'm talking about that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Awesome Kong, um, where uh, she power bombed her and then did the most erotic pin I've ever seen in a wrestling match. Man, that, that's something to go and Google. Anyway, um, moving on from my uh, perversion, let's go to Sammy Callahan versus Moose. Um, everything about Sammy Callahan, I mentioned this before, I should dislike the way he probos, the way he dresses, everything about him. I think he's brilliant. I really do. You know, he's a, I was talking about Eli Drake earlier on, getting their character. Uh, Sammy Callahan is a guy going back to old school wrestling of living his character and not breaking character ever. And I think he's doing a sterling job. And the guy doesn't look like he should be a wrestler, but he's awesome as far as I'm concerned. Really, he's completely changed my perceptions I have of him. And I and I can't talk highly enough of him. You know, the, the thing would, um, I find fascinating, you know, I like his work, but he seems such a small guy, but the stuff that he's able to do, and I mean, it looks so brutal for, you know, him, I think he's what, like, he's under six feet, it looks like, but what they've done with this guy, um, you know, I I look at him and see him being one of the big names, you know, you know how every promotion has their top guys, I mean, if you I could if you told me by the end of this year, he's going to be one of the five or six main event players. I mean, I'd have no problem with that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think what they've done to OVE and Sammy Callahan, although OVE themselves have pushed more to the background, what they've done with Sammy Callahan is they've kept this stable interesting without having to be involved in a title picture. And I think that's excellent. You know, they've really creative 
I've been, I've been just generally excellent this year of being able to build storylines that don't have to revolve around titles. And, and I, you know, at the moment, what Impact is doing, I, I just think it's fantastic, you know, and, and this is just another example, you know, they've given a, a reason to be feuding with Moose, you know, three, four weeks ago, two months ago, you'd have thought, where, where are OVE going? You know, and they've built a whole storyline around this accident that's happened and made it interesting. What do you think of the match, by the way? Yeah, it was it was great. Um, you know, I will say because at first I was wondering, you know, if we were gonna get any kind of follow up with Moose losing his briefcase to Eli Drake, but you know, this makes sense. It gives Moose something to do because I think right now, you know, you kind of wonder what are they gonna do with Moose. So he has an, um, a friendship with Eddie Edwards, so you know he's backing him up. But yeah, I thought this was great, and I like that they went with the DQ finish. I know a lot of times we hate to see the DQ finish, but in certain instances, it works because you know you don't want Callahan to eat the pin, and you don't want Moose to eat the pin because Moose has a lot of momentum and Callahan does as well. So I thought the DQ was uh, appropriate in this match. Good, good. Well, um, I'm just going to point out as well that, you know, Moose, there's one thing that he started to do, which I don't like, and he started to hulk up, uh, for want of a better term. Um, I don't like it when wrestlers hulk up. <laughs> I've never liked it. Never liked it when Hulk did it. I never did like, well, the Ultimate Warrior, I'll give him a pass. But everyone else, it just seems senseless, you know, that they got so much adrenaline that you can punch them in the face and they just shake their head. No, no, no. <laughs> As Falabar would go, um, I just I, I've never liked it. it. You know, it kind of I, I know ultimately this is fake fighting, but still it takes you out of the moment. And, and he did it a few times in this match, and um, it was good. The one thing I would say that there was a lot of really close near pins, which was good. I, I like seeing that. I don't like people kicking out of finishes in non pay per view matches, but there was a lot of close pins that could have been pins that you think, oh, that's the match ended. So it was it was excellent, excellent, and. Um, yeah. The one thing that was weird was when OV rushed the ring. I don't know if you noticed this. Um, Jake Chris, uh, the dark haired one, um, he seemed to be really slow. I don't know if he's carrying an injury or something, but um, uh, I can't, what's the other, is Jake and what's the other one? Uh, Dave. So, so Jake is the blonde one. So Dave. Is, is that right? Anyway, the blonde one was really going to town, you know, and doing his OTT mannerisms and really kicking him. And Jake was just hanging back, or Dave was hanging back and just putting a, a really soft, fake looking boot in. I, I don't know why it, it just stuck out to me, but it was almost like, oh, God, do I have to really go and do this? But um, yeah, the, the segment ended really, really strong with uh, Eddie Edwards coming in, then Alicia coming in, and Sammy Callahan once again playing the heel fantastically. And uh, yeah, and then we all know what happened next. You could take it from here. What did you think of this? Um, I thought it was random at first, but um, it's cool to see Dreamer. Um, I guess this this gives them, you know, sets up a six man match because that was the thing I was wondering. You know, eventually, were we gonna get a three on two? Like, who's gonna be the third person that's gonna aid Eddie Edwards and? Um, Moose. Now, why I would have preferred them to use the spot for somebody on the roster that maybe, you know, we haven't seen or hasn't been able to kind of get any screen time. I have no problem with Tommy Dreamer. Um, legend, ECW legend, hardcore icon, you know, whatever you want to call him. So, um, it's interesting to say the least. Yeah, but before I say about Tommy Dreamer, the, the one person who I'd have loved to have seen appear would have been uh, Davey Richards. Uh, that that would have been a great surprise and a nice. It would have made more sense uh, to me. Yeah, it, you know, it's just it, I guess because it, it just comes off, comes across as random because you know he just come comes out of nowhere. Now, with that said, I don't know if on the Indies or in the House of How Hardcore, Callahan and Dreamer have some sort of history. Um, uh, listeners, you guys can go ahead and share your comments on it as I'm not aware. I don't know if you're aware, but it just it just comes across as random. And I don't know the relationship that he has with Eddie Edwards and Moose. Now, with that said, that's not to look too much into it. I'm just kind of just saying, generally speaking, it's, you know, he just, you know, we see Dreamer just come out of nowhere, so to speak. So, 
Yeah, uh, and just on that note, uh, if any of you have got opinions on who you would have liked to have seen in that spot, except for Tommy, uh, also let us know in the comments, um, as Rose said. Right, okay, um, so Tommy Dreamer, um, it was funny, he looked fat but in shape at the same time. And <laughs> it's a weird thing, his beard made him look fat because his beard was kind of balancing on top of his double chin. Uh, but he looked the same shape he's always been his whole wrestling career. Uh, so it was a bit weird, but he actually looked all right. And, um, you know, to be honest, am I, am I looking forward to seeing this match? Most probably not. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a nothing feud, although I think the feud has been very good building on, on, on something. But, you know, the addition of Tommy Dreamer, it doesn't really make me that much more interested in it. Um, but I suppose it gives it a reason for being a hardcore match. W would you think that this was, mo was probably going to be Lashley's position originally if he hadn't left? Do you think he would have been the sixth man? Um, No, because we've seen with that feud, that kind of just ended relatively quickly. Um, it seemed like they started off with uh, going after Lashley. Then Eddie Edwards aided Lashley when OV had the numbers gang. And then Eddie Edwards, we seen Eddie Edwards start feuding with Callahan. And then, you know, we get the whole bat incident. So they kind of did away with the association of Lashley and Edwards. I think had we seen some follow-up with that prior, then maybe. But it looked like that you know, the point was to kind of move on to the Eddie Edwards and then they fell into the whole accident, which, you know, became a, an interesting feud. Now, the match that we're going to get at the at Redemption is going to be a House of Hardcore match. So, I mean, I think that's a great way. That way, OVE's not left out because we've seen, you know, as of late where OVE's kind of really been in the background. We haven't seen them have too many matches on Impact as of late. So it gives them an opportunity to do something as well as you get, you know, the hardcore element. You have Tommy Dreamer and then you got Moose and Eddie Edwards. So it should be cool. Um, ho hopefully they don't go too overboard, you know, and what I mean by that, like flaming tables and stuff. I don't, the, the thing I don't want to see is them taking unnecessary bumps where, you know, they're putting themselves at risk. The, the thing that made me laugh about it is that Tommy Dreamy you know, says this will be the first ever House of Hardcore match. And I'm just thinking, how's it different to the Demon's Dance and the Janice on a Pole match? And every hardcore match is the same. It doesn't matter what name you give it. Um, I just thought it was a bit strange. Yeah, they, you know, I noticed what they do is a lot of times, and it's cool because, you know, you come up with creative titles for match, matches, but essentially a lot of them are the same i i will say and i don't know what's the name of it but the one where it's in the cage but the weapons are hanging um from the top not in, they're inside the cage but they're hanging and you have to pull them off of what they're hanging off of i think that's pretty unique yeah what's uh, um some uh, is it something locked down hardcore lockdown or something like that yeah, isn't it yeah um, that that I, I i think that's a very unique concept compared to you know your standard hardcore match you, everyone's going up uh underneath the ring to pull things out so I don't know. I've never seen a house of hardcore. Maybe they just have weapons scattered all over the place. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You talked about the unnecessary bumps. Maybe this is the match where um, they do something backstage, you know, where it starts off in the ring, it spills backstage and they have a pre-recorded segment before it comes back in. You know, it, would, it would certainly help Tommy Dreamer and uh, Sammy Callahan, you know, hit their hardcore spots without any danger. So maybe that's the way they'll do it. All right. Um, then... We went solo on commentary with uh, Josh Matthews versus P.T. Williams. Now, this to me just was just a waste of television time. Um, don't get me wrong. I like Josh Matthews. I even like him when, he, when he's in the ring. But but this this was filler. I mean, I didn't see any point to this at all. This is anything I didn't like in the, on, the, on the show. Well, you know where I kind of found it where it was odd was the fact that you have Josh associated with Seidel and I, we can get into this more when we talk about this match, but we seen Josh kind of break character, so to speak, because he's supposed to be this, you know, trying to find his chi and this and that. And then we see him cut this aggressive promo. So I just kind of thought it doesn't make sense with the route that they're going, but um, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. Um, I mean, I'd rather take this than, you know, you think about when we used to get the the filler matches where they were showing a whole bunch of, 
like different shows where you know rest uh mm-hmm. some of the people on the roster wrestling at different shows so i'd rather take these segments and that yeah i mean it, it was fine but i i just think it, it played out too long you know with josh um you know goofing around for quite a time although i did like his his girly scream as he ran around the ring i thought that was funny uh but anyway uh yeah it just was basically a beat down of pt williams wasn't it that's that's what it was there to do uh to try and you know i suppose rough him up before the uh the pay-per-view so uh then we went and saw a i suppose a bit of a random recap of Brian Cage and Lashley. Uh, but again, I don't really know why they showed this because all it was doing was, I suppose, highlighting the fact that Lashley's no longer there and Cage wasn't on this show. So um, it was good. It was a good package. But I, once again, I think it, it was just eating into minutes uh, of TV time that we didn't really need to eat into. But having actually, you know, I'm going to correct myself there because I, I moan when people aren't shown on TV for a few weeks. And at least they've shown Cage on here, even though he didn't have a match. So I take all of that back. Ignore me, listeners. Yeah, and then we also, I don't, I don't think we explained it, we explained the promo, but the match itself, I mean, there's really nothing to talk about. It was more of an angle to progress the feud between Petey Williams and Seidel, but it wasn't really much of a match. We got Petey Williams applying the sharpshooter on Josh, and Seidel eventually interferes, and that, that was a, another thing where I was uh, referring to with breaking the whole spiritual gimmick that they're working whereas we've seen some aggression out of Saito and I think that was important because we seen him kind of we knew he was a heel but he was kind of like in between and we seen that aggression uh this week so I thought that was great leading up to their eventual showdown at Redemption yeah so um just uh moving on uh, after the recap of Lashley and Cage we had a backstage segment with Johnny Impact and Congo Kong. Not Awesome Kong, Congo Kong. Um, what do you make of this one, bro? Because I, I, I'm i sure you're not going to be surprised what I tell you afterwards. Okay, I will say this. This, by far, since Johnny Impact's arrival in, in Impact Wrestling, I thought he did well in this promo. I didn't. He didn't come across with you know any cheesy lines. Like You've seen some seriousness on his behalf. And I like the fact that they they have Jimmy Jacobs doing the talking because I thought at this time they were going to have Congo Kong speak. And I think having Congo Kong not say a word, it makes his character even better. You, it, like, uh, I think a lot of times when you have these uh, monster-like characters, the moment that you get them to talk, and I mean, I know it happens eventually because, you know, through character progression, I think it takes away... But I will say this, I'm really looking forward to the encounter between these two. Um, not not only just because I want to see how the match plays out, but to see who, you know, goes over because, you know, we had talked about this. I think this can really propel Congo Kong. Whereas, I mean, with Johnny Impact, I mean, if he wins this, I mean, it doesn't really do anything for him as well as if he loses this. So I'm really looking forward to next week seeing this match. Do you know what? I, I was actually setting you up for a for fall there because I, I actually really enjoyed the promo by Johnny Impact. And the reason being is that um, it's the kind of crap that I would be thinking. Why does Congo Kong, where do you get his makeup done? You know, it's, it's the kind of random thoughts that I usually come up with on this show. So I actually thought it was quite a funny promo and it plays with his character. But as you quite rightly said, the, the stare down. It actually looked quite a real and intense stir down. So I, I think they did well this. And, you know, bearing in mind, it is a bit random that they've thrown these two together. Um, I actually think it's working well. You know, th- this is a few that's actually got me quite interested. Now, th- this is not on the pay-per-view. It's just on next week's, isn't it? Yes. And that and that's what even makes it even great. Because when you look at it, I probably used the word great like three times already. But... I think you look at next week as being the go-home show to Redemption, and we get this match. So maybe we see something where this match, eventually they have a rematch at the pay-per-view. We just have to wait and see. But I will say this, too. um, And, I mean, I guess we have to see what happens with the future of the Grand Championship. That's why I kind of believe that belt needs to be on a guy and I, I know we've talked about where you, you think maybe in the X Division he would do well, which I agree to. But, you know, you imagine if you had the Grand Championship on a Johnny Impact or somebody else who's not in the main event at the moment, 
you know, that gives the belt, it makes the belt seem somewhat important. Instead, you know, we have it on Austin Aries at the moment and we don't know what he's doing with it because yeah, he's, he's going into a pay-per-view and until now, it's just only been announced that he's defending the world title. But yeah, with that said, this match will be next week. So... No, I agree with you. And, and you know what? I would actually like to see Kong go Kong with, with the, the Grand Championship because I think that would be more interesting that every week uh, uh, Jimmy Jacobs comes down and says, who have we got this week to challenge for the for the Grand Championship? You know, and then someone comes in and it could be someone off the roster, someone, you know, on the roster to come down and challenge him. And I think that would be a good way of using Kong or Kong, who can beat my monster for this title. You know, I, I think that's a much better use of it than than possibly Johnny Impact, you know. But yeah, uh, it'll be interesting, you know, because these guys haven't got anything on the pay-per-view at the moment, as far as I know. So I, I can imagine that this, this feud's not going to end next week um, and it's going to set something up for the pay-per-view. Okay, so next one up. <laughs> okay, uh, six of my five, sorry, five of my six favourite wrestlers on the roster were involved in the, in the next match. We had uh, the Cult of Lee uh, with KM versus Richard Justice, Falabar and Tyrus. Now, who do you think the one of those six is the one that I don't like? Tyrus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the other five, I think, are all comedy gold in, in various senses, you know. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people think that this is this is really a, a nothing match. But once again, creative have given these six something to do. You know, which is not involving a title. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I wish it wasn't as as cliched as a as a bully angle. But at the same time, if it's a bully angle, I don't think that the faces should have gone over two weeks from a pay per view. I think if anything, they should have carried on this angle some way. You know, like Tyrus gets you know caught at ringside and can't come and help, and then they beat up Richard Justice for a bit longer and then make their escape. But it was what it was. But anything to add to this? I just don't like, and I mean, I'm sure this is just a short, you know, little feud, a harmless feud. I think the people that need to get the rub are everyone except Tyrus. I kind of just hate the fact that when he answers, it's like he's the, the strong point. And that's the thing we've seen with him during his tenure with Impact. Like, he's been made to look somewhat strong. And I'm not saying there's not a place for him, but... And I mean, I guess, you know, the the cool thing was to see Ba actually get the pin because I can't recall ever seeing Ba get a pin in Impact. But I just kind of just think with something like this, it would have been nice to kind of have Ba shine the most out of the babyface side. And Richard Justice, uh, when I was watching this, man, I, I can't get the image out of my head when the Gauntlet for Gold uh, last year... <laughs> where he enters and he was doing the squats like that. <laughs> Every time I see him, I always think about that. And uh, yeah, you know, th this little feud, and I mean, I know it all stemmed from KM and fat shaming. I, I would have I rather them go in a different direction than that. But I mean, it's giving these guys something to do. Um, as far as the quote of Lee, and I want your take on it. I'm hoping that they continue to stay within the tag ranks because you look at the tag division, man. I mean, there's not much. So do you think, you know, we're still going to see them, you know, prop, uh, possibly challenging for the tag titles again in the foreseeable future? Or do you think that was just a one-off? Well, I guess it really ha depends what happens with Eli Drake. Uh, if he doesn't win it, then... Yeah, absolutely. I can I can see them challenging again. Um, the other thing is, I think you've got to think of who are the other tag teams because you've got OVE. Are they going to come back into the tag title picture now that they've been away from a little while? Uh, if they don't, then Cart of Lee obviously can come into it. I hope they do because you know they're so entertaining and these guys deserve to be doing something other than just being two guys in a six man nothing feud about bullying. You know, uh, they deserve more than that. And so I I, don't, I really don't know. And, and do you know what? their feud with LAX as well it was so short but it was really good so I don't know why they cut that so short I, I think that it needed to go you know to the pay-per-view that would have made more sense but anyway they did what they did do I think they're going to come back and do it I don't think they will but I'd like to see them back there if that makes sense yeah uh, you know yeah it, like you said they that feud had more legs to it I think what the whole you know, possibly, I don't know, we just have to wait and see, but I'd really love for them to do some type of tournament, you know, do some kind of, uh, 
tag team invitational where even you can get guys from some of these partnerships that way because with, with LAX I don't want to say they're getting stale but you know there's really no one for them to work with even if, if they were to drop the titles you would assume that they're going to get them back and you know I, I think they could benefit from a, a break from the tag title picture yeah uh, possibly yeah i mean if if they don't have anyone to face it yeah they, they need a break and, and i've said all along that the two of them you know they've got future single stars written all over them but i think it's just too soon they need to build their personas more as a tag team individually within the tag team because at the moment conan does all the talking for them you only get to see little snippets of them when they do a clubhouse segment and i just wish that maybe conan would take a step back and let them do a bit more talking but yeah we'll see um i, I don't know what's going to happen with the tag division <sighs> okay i said that i don't think eli drake is going to win but do, do you think that he is really going to win it with, with steiner Yes, because I think it'd be too predictable to do the have him cash in with with the um, for the World Impact World Championship. I could see a scenario where he they win the titles, and then what ends up happening is you get a replacement uh, of Steiner. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you do something, throw Braxton Sutter there, where Eli gets another partner. Um, I because I, I think having Eli in the tag team division just you know for a small period of time it not only elevates the tag division but I mean it gives him something to do it doesn't demote him because you all he's knowing his back pocket he has that world title shot so that's why I'm just going going with it I, I think him and Steiner are gonna win because you know that way you can have LAX chase it for a bit while they get some more tag teams in the mix because if you have LAX retain what else are they going to do? I mean, we, I mean, when's the last time we've seen them have a match? We've, the past couple of weeks has just been uh, the vignettes, which are, you know, amazing, but their best work is when we see them in the ring doing what they yes. do. It's true. I suppose we've got some tapings coming up, so, you know, that might lead to something, but you're right. But the, 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 the problem is if they drop the titles, it still gives you the problem. What do they do? Other than maybe chasing it for a little while, but I, I just can't see Drake and Steiner, as tag champions i don't know i just can't see it but we'll see we'll see let us know listeners uh comment in the section below let us know what you think is going to happen all right uh the main event and it really was a main event here so uh i'm not gonna i'm gonna let you run with this one what what did t give us a recap on what you thought of it well what i i mean i thought it was excellent um credit to impact uh the one thing that they don't get enough credit for before you had the whole women's revolution and this movement to showcase women wrestlers in the main event they've been doing this since the original creation of the knockouts division so when we get main events of such i mean it's not a big deal to us if anything we're just looking at it like all right this is an awesome main event it's not awesome just because there's women participants but it you know it's just an awesome main event and this is the same thing um, I wonder, though, why they didn't, and maybe it's something they're saving, why they didn't continue on with the whole Red Wedding match that we were supposed to get but due at Bound for Glory, but due to, you know, the issues that uh, they had with uh, some kind of a thing with uh, Taya, we didn't get it. Um, but with that said, I, I thought this was excellent. I don't know if this blows off their feud, but if it does, th this was a great way to do it. Um both Rosemary and Taya should be commended for their work in this match. I thought they put on a fantastic match. And I thought that ending to for even Taya to take that pile driver through a table and Rosemary to execute it, that was uh, nicely done. Uh, the ending was, was fantastic. And I, I will say one thing about all of the knockouts that they they book them very well um but there's been a few you know who've been lost in the mix like sienna it's a bit of a shame she's disappeared from things in casey spinelli but generally you know they, they've been booking the storylines very very well i i just don't know if this will be the blow off you'd like to they can't really build anything for these two in a week and a half for the you know for, for redemption so you, you most probably think that this isn't the blow off that they'll have you know um the rematch at the pay-per-view and maybe have the red wedding i think i actually asked um 
tie on on one of the press conferences uh you know if she could tell us more about the match is it something planned and and although she didn't really answer it she said oh you'll just have to wait and see which makes you think that possibly at redemption we'll get that red wedding match so let's let's hope so because you know i'm although they've had some really good matches i'm happy to see another one you know i i don't think i you know we're talking about lax and cult of lee i think this has still got a bit of legs in it I don't think this should be the, the blow off. And I think that's one criticism I will say of Impact. And, and, you know, I've been very, very positive about everything that they're doing at the moment is sometimes they do blow off feuds too quickly. You know, America's top team. I know that's for a different reason, but that finished just, you know, like a cl click of the fingers, you know, with the same with Cult of Lee. If they did it with this one, it would be a real shame, I think. Yeah, they just have to have some kind of uh, plan. And I'm sure after the pay-per-view, because you think about everything right now, it's kind of, you know, the big focus has been on the pay-per-view. And I got to say, the build-up towards Redemption, man, I mean, this has been one of the best build-ups that I can remember in some time with this company. So kudos to Impact. But I think after that, then they'll kind of reassess everything and you got, we'll kind of get more of an idea. Um, I think this is Taya's first loss in Impact. So, you know, it does nothing to her. Um I think she'll be a big player in the foreseeable future as it pertains to the title picture in the knockouts division. So that's something we got to look forward to. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully I think they can get a couple more matches out of this, but if it is a blow off, um, I it kind of sucks cause I really wanted to see what the red wedding was going to be. Cause some people thought first blood, I thought it was going to have something to do with the mist, but, uh, I rather see what they were talking about than assume, you know? Mm. Well, funny enough, you know, we're saying that this has still got legs. You know, this feud, don't forget, started before Bone for Glory, you know, uh, months before Bone for Glory. So it's been going six months, you know, so it, it's credit to Impact that it still feels fresh. And I know, obviously, we had four or five weeks where Tyre wasn't involved because of the visa issue. But still, it does feel fresh and that, you know, this could go on. It doesn't feel like there's any winner at the moment. I, I know obviously Rosemary won that match, but it doesn't feel like the, it was such a defining loss to Tyre that the feud's over, if that makes sense. It, it feels like a loss in a battle, but not a loss in the war. If that makes, yeah, let's see where I'm coming from. But anyway, yeah, so uh, we'll see. And, you know, I, I think the fact that there is only two weeks until the pay-per-view and they won't have time to build these, you know, a new feud for these ladies. I, I think it. we should see it as red that, that, you know, they are going to face each other. All right. Um, so that was pretty much the show, except for just an end segment where Aries talks about Patron no showing. Uh, it shows a bit of the press conference, those kind of things. And, um, you know, the, the, the big crime in all of this is that we're not going to get my meat on a pole match that I was predicting was going to happen on the Redemption pay-per-view. Um, and then uh, it also showed Tommy Dreamer. And I suppose one thing we didn't mention when we're talking about Tommy Dreamer, the exciting thing about this is that it looks like Impact might be getting a bit of a working relationship with House of Hardcore as well. So that's all very, very positive. Are, are they on the Global Wrestling Network, House of Hardcore? They're on the Fight app, aren't they, from memory? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But you know what? I think these partnerships and we kind of seen what they did like um and the prime examples with ishimori how they put the exhibition championship on them with these partnerships they need a you i mean i don't want to say they need but i think you know for like when we're talking about some of these divisions that are thin you know utilize some of these partnerships where you got some of these guys competing for some of the titles on impact and i mean you could put the belt on some i'm not saying every single one but then that helps you know, instead of kind of, you know, throwing, trying to throw together tag teams. But with that said, too, you know, try to utilize everyone that you have on the roster first before you, you know, decide to go on the outside. Mm. But, yeah, I, I, you know, I think that the idea, and I don't know if it was Jeff Jarrett's or not, uh, I'll ask him when we interview him in a couple of weeks' time, but I think the idea behind having a network of everyone bar wwe is, is a good idea and i think it's the business model that that has not saved impact but it's certainly going to make them viable going forward um you know and hopefully in the future you never know you might even get lucha on there uh lucha underground you know and get some get, get some other programming it'd be great to have a network which is just not wwe you know uh, a real alternative but anyway impact once again great show great build some really really good stuff so some not so good stuff but Overall, I think they're doing a sterling job and, and I can't wait for the pay-per-view and, and the next set of tapings because, 
you know, we're in, a, we're in a, an environment now where we really don't, with all this talent coming and going, we really don't know what's going to happen. But what we do know is that it's going to be well thought out. It's going to make sense and it's going to be enjoyable. Yeah, I, if I had to give a grade thus far with this whole new regime and everything, I'd give them an A. And, you know, you can call me, you know, just because I'm biased, that I'm biased or anything. But I really think what they've done, they've went back to the basics and they've strived to put on an easy to watch television show that leaves us wanting to see next week's episode to see what happens next and you know with the progression of characters i mean there's still always room for improvement but i, I really think they've done a solid job in you know, the wrestlers as well and they've been able to some of the things that happen like we just seen with the release of el patron or wrestlers departing they've been able to fix i mean i don't want to say fix but you know be able to make it work and not let those things affect the product and I don't know if I'm making much sense, but, you know, a lot of times you get departures and then everything just kind of just seems just lost. But, you know, they're they're good. on They seem to be good on the fly. And I really think this pay-per-view, I really think this will be their statement. I think if they hit hit a home run with this and that's not to put any pressure on them, but I really think if they put on a solid pay-per-view, it's going to do wonders for the product moving forward. The one thing I will say is obviously that the, view, the viewing figures have been good again uh, this week, and it does seem like there's been the average is get, is going up, which is what you want, you know. So I know there's going to be dips and, and peaks and troughs, but the average looks like it's going up, which is what you want to see. But there also seems to be more, I don't know, positivity from you know the internet wrestling community, the comments that that you're reading each week. So that that's a good thing. And I know on our channel most of it's positive. You know, you don't get hardly any negative stuff on there but when you do read you know impact wrestling results you know on on the major sites you know historically there's always been some trolls on there but a lot of it is negative but there's a lot more positivity now and i think that that's a good thing as well you know uh, it shows that the company is going in the right direction but anyway that was wrestling uh i was impact rest that was wrestling of course it was wrestling if you only got to uh 50 minutes into this podcast you're now realizing it's wrestling you're in trouble anyway what i was trying to say is this is impact that was impact wrestling this week and and uh, make sure you do hit subscribe uh check out all the other content on the channel because there is a lot out there and uh, it's very very good make sure you check out bq's interview with uh, congo kong which is up now uh some really fascinating stuff in there and and i don't know if you listen to it uh bro but uh, what a nice guy. Um, he, he doesn't sound like uh, he looks, does he? He's a, he's, a, he's a top guy. Yeah, he comes across as extremely humble. And uh, I it, it probably just sounds like I say this about anyone, but I really think he'll be a main event player. I think, you know, with the pairing of Jimmy Jacobs and just some of the things that he says in his interview, he strikes me as a guy that really wants to be the guy in impact i mean i know everyone wants to be the guy of whatever company they're in but i could see that happening for him i think he has what it takes but the key is just the progression and you know the build and whatnot but i i recommend you guys if you haven't already uh check out that interview with bq it was nicely done and also your interview with eli drake i know it was two months ago but that was great as well so be sure to check out both interviews Oh, just on that note, when he was on the teleconference, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, uh, something that wasn't picked up by the dirt sheets was I asked him about his contract and he said that he still hasn't signed a new contract, which is a bit worrying, but there you go. Um, yeah, uh, everyone, thanks for listening. Make sure to hit subscribe and uh, if you want, give us a cheeky little share as well if you're on uh, Facebook to let other, know, other people know about the show. But for the time being, that's us out. Good night. <laughs>